Yeah, that's the Brood War Skin Nexus, is what that is. Which is funny, because it makes it look smaller, whereas the Brood War Nexuses look bigger. So, a little bit confused on that. Yes, guy in the chat. I lived in Korea for over 14 years, so... Uh, I never drove while I was there, I just used public transportation. So eventually my license from America ran out. So I have now moved to Canada, I need a license, and I don't have one. And it's a pain in my ass. <laughs> so. Uh, let's let's do this. Let's, let's see what uh, Trigger is going to bring for us. Now, uh... Yeah, normally NA open is, is is like three Koreans at least in the top four. Is GSL over something? Not kept up in Korean esports scene. <laughs> uh, GSL is barely still still around. It's like very small now, very small prize pool. ASL is much, much bigger. StarCraft 2 is very small in Korea. Extremely small. Um... It's about as close as you can get to a dead game that still has money. <laughs> uh, it's a very sad thing, but people are trying to get some more tournaments together, some more funding together, so that's a really positive thing. So maybe maybe something can be done about that. Uh, ASL is huge on Afrika TV. It's huge. It gets huge viewership. Uh, a lot of people stream it and stuff, so uh, ASL is, is very, very healthy. <clears throat> Biggest Brood War in Korea versus other esports. It's bigger than most of them. League is bigger. Uh, I don't know. The viewership versus player base and stuff, but Brood War is one of the biggest. It's still one of the most played in PC bongs and stuff as well. So. Yeah, yeah. No, there's still a good tourneys. There's a lot of tournaments that people are trying to put on and, and help out the, the whole scene, Korean scene too. So, you know, good things happening still in StarCraft too. Good to see. Now, looking at this game, Trigger is going into Twilight. Okay, we'll see if it's Twilight Robo. We would imagine so. Oh, oh, you know what? He gets the SCV. I'm going to give it to him. Oh, that was that was poor micro. I think he could have gotten one more shot off there. Maybe not at the Red Marine, but could have gotten one more shot. Oh, well. Anyways, uh, Trigger making the moves, man. Here we go. Stalker going to go up. The three Marines, one of which is very damaged, uh, run up the ramp. They come back with the damaged one in the back, as should be. Nice targeting. And going to back out now. Now, the Hellion is getting in the natural. The one Stalker here going to deal quite a bit of damage. Oh, I thought that probe was coming up to hit it. Oh, he's going to lose some probes now, unfortunately. Think. Oh, you know what? He saved it. He saved it. Never mind. Very good. Very good stuff. Anyways, I want to talk about uh, Trigger as a player because you guys, I'm sure, know Cure. I'm sure you guys have watched enough professional StarCraft 2 that you have a pretty good idea of who Cure is and how strong he is, uh, the volatility of his play. Um, now, Trigger is one of the stronger up-and-coming Protoss players in North America, and he really honestly plays like uh, the most honorable straight-up macro Protoss that you can think. He goes two gate blink observer almost every game into third nexus, which is a very solid, good middle of the road build. And then he gets into robo units and heavy. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of crazy attacks or anything. Just kind of builds out a strong army and tries to outplay his opponent. It's really cool stuff to see. Now this is unfortunate. Oh, a good pull, a good pull. So forces this back. He ends up losing four probes so far. The mine just going to skedaddle out of there. So that's a little bit annoying. His third nexus is coming up though, right? So he's still up five workers, three workers right now. Uh, and is going to be able to produce quite a bit. So... Yeah. Uh, I, I think Trigger's fine. Like, that's, uh, that's not the end of the world, the amount that he lost there. But it is a little bit annoying that there is a mine out that he hasn't really dealt with. See? Eh, another kill there. Uh, and he still has this medevac in the back. So yeah, that's that's very annoying stuff. His blink is about to finish, so he might be able to catch the medevac. Stalkers are coming up. Stalkers are coming up. Uh, yeah. There was no real catch there. His own Sim City block him out. He loses five probes. Ah, this is killing me. This is killing me. 
He's fallen apart a little bit. This is a bit too much damage. Uh, you can see that Kier obviously has zero pressure on himself back home. Zero pressure. He is the one applying all the pressure. He's the one dealing all the damage. He is the one affording his opponent opportunities to make mistakes, which is such an important aspect of StarCraft uh, 1 and 2. This is actually something I've been thinking about quite a bit because I noticed I was watching some hockey lately since I moved to Canada. You know, I just want to fit in. Uh, oh, Jesus. Um, and they keep track of shots on goal, and that seems to be a really great metric, right? Like, the, the team that's shooting on goal three times more is going to have more points. That's, like, pretty straightforward, right? So, there's something like that in StarCraft where you, by being active in certain ways, you can get your opponent to fuck up, or you can get damage, right? And there's ways to do that without being all in. Right, because just doing like an all-in attack is one thing, but something like shots on goal, like you don't, maybe your shot on goal in hockey, like I don't know a lot about hockey, but like if you pull your goalie and then you're getting more shots on goal, like that might not be it because that's kind of all-in because then your opponent can score as well. That would be like an all-in in StarCraft, right? But if you look at it, like this medevac out there in that one mine that Kira has been utilizing, like, he is keeping on so much pressure with that and gaining so much value with that. So that that would be my version of, like, this is kind of the idea of the shots on goal, where it's like, yeah, we can... You know what I mean? You're you're, you're giving these... You're, you're creating these situations where you can do something nice and your opponent can screw up. And that's what we've seen so far this game. This is a very small army for Trigger. Ooh, that... Okay, excellent force fields. Just slightly not excellent force fields. Uh, does let them in. Uses the overcharge earlier than he wants. Uh, hold on. We'll play that in a second just because this is going kind of crazy right now. Uh, this could be the deciding battle, but I will play that. Sorry. Uh, now, he's taking quite a bit of damage. The overcharge is done. That's a little bit unfortunate. If he had nailed those force fields perfectly, then the game looks a little bit different right now. But anyways, we have a double drop going into the main base. Oh, dude. It is a little bit painful. Look at this. He just rides by everything. He's going to drop in the back. A little blink over there. Slow Zealots coming up. Uh, okay, there's their charge. And yeah, this is this is a little bit tough. Uh, I like that he left the double siege tank too. That's another, another opportunity for some additional damage. Uh, but okay, it, it gets dealt with. It gets dealt with. Where are we at? Cure is up by three workers. That's a little bit painful. Cure's army supply is 14 more. Okay. But what is the quality of this army? How many Colossi do we have? Do we have three? Do we still have two, three sentries? Do we have an okay little clutch of stalkers right now? Like, maybe maybe Trigger can hold on and stabilize. He's getting a single robo. Okay, no, he only has two Colossus, so that's a little bit more painful. Looks like a pickup for a drop in the main base. There's not a good spread of defense. Okay, that's a nice warp in. That can help. Three Stalkers, if you get right in front of that Medivac, will do well. Oh, five now. There you go. There you go. That's what we're looking for. Oh, wow. That just flew through rocks um, and snaps the neck of that Medivac. That's fantastic. Okay, that he needed that. That was very important. He needed that split, split. Very nice. Very nice. Colossi just railing through here. Okay. Oh, loses a sentry there. I really want to see the retention of these high-quality units. Double Forge is going, and he's going Double Disruptor. I, You know what? I'm going to say I appreciate the Double Forge, even though it feels like it's a little bit greedy. You need to do something here to try to really build a game that you can win rather than just not die, right? Like, you don't ever want to play a game where you just try not to die unless you're against someone that's completely all in, because that is winning. You want to create a game where you can win. You have to give yourself some sort of opportunity. There has to be some scenario here where Trigger can win the game or there's no point. And the double forge is affording him to do something like that. It's like, well, we can maybe like spend more on defense and just continue to, to block attacks for a little bit, but no upgrades. And then it's like, well, now Cure is sitting on 2-2 two, two and you're on 0-0 zero, zero, and there's no chance of winning from there. The black glitchy stuff, that's a disable. That, that makes it so the unit can't attack or do any abilities. And that's an armor shred right there. That additional two damage from everything. Or minus two armor, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, uh, Trigger holds on. <laughs> and, you know, Kier is still up in army supply. He's got that third base. We definitely need the fourth made now. 
There's not really... You can't sit on three base, I don't think, any longer. Like, even if it's dangerous, it's probably best to just take a fourth. And it takes a little damage trying to get rid of that. Another nice four Marauder drop here in the back. Ooh, the targeting from Cure is super good. Notice how he's targeting down those Stalkers so that he can get away with the Medivac. But more come in, so that will get cleaned. And Cure doesn't have anything else on this side of the map right at this moment. So Trigger has stabilized at least to right now. You can see he's taken way more damage than Cure. That is, yeah, that's that's pretty significant, right? Like, what, 1,500, 1,600 more minerals and damage that he's taken? Fourth Nexus gets started. Oh, I did not think he would take that as his fourth. That makes me feel... I felt like he was going to take the one to the north of the natural. Uh, just to have an area that blocked off some of where you could drop into the main base. Um, but yeah, let's see how this goes for him. That's, that is an interesting thing, by the way, about, about StarCraft 2. I think that we might have a little bit more than StarCraft 1 is there can be a little bit more variety in some of the matchups for where you take those later bases. Right, like I think both of these choices are fine. Uh, anyways, the uh, disruptors starting to help him clear some of these mines and whatnot. That is a lot of disruptors that we have. So this is the type of quality play that we see out of Trigger, right? Like this is a very important aspect. Uh, he reminds me of a patience that is uh, much better at micro and decision making. Like if you guys recall the pro gamer from Korea, Patience, he's literally, like I actually studied all of his games and made charts and shit and graphs or whatever, well not graphs, but you know, like because I couldn't understand how he ever won a game because he was so bad at everything. And it, oh God, this flank is insane. Oh boy. The disruptors are so far away, so far out of position. This is a very sad moment. I wish that those had been there. Because look at how many he has. He's losing a lot of these as well. Oh, God. Well, that's that's going to be game, unfortunately. When you lose all of your all of your units at that point, uh, there's not really any any comeback potential, I would say. See, he's down. He's, his supply has been doubled at this point. Three times the army supply. Ugh. He's about to have 2-2, two, two, which is nice, but like Liberator's going to start coming out now for Cure. Trigger going to try to expand the bottom right. So let me finish, I guess, saying what I was going to say about Patience. Uh, Patience, like, I couldn't believe that he ever won games because there were so many bad things about his play. And eventually, like, I literally watched and rewatched like, all of his pro games so many times to try to figure this out because it was the most fascinating thing because I could not name one thing he was good at, yet he was doing well in tournaments for years. Uh, and it turns out that the one thing Patience did better than everyone was retain uh, factory unit. Or not factory, robotics units. He literally would have two robotics going and he would lose everything else. His probes, his upgrades, his gateway units. And he would just keep the base core of robo units alive. And then eventually he'd win just because they're so powerful when they get in big numbers. So yeah, that's something I've seen in Trigger. Like... In this particular game, a lot of things went wrong, and, and we obviously saw his uh, disruptors get separated from the rest of the army and everything died. Uh, but that's definitely something I see in him that's quite strong, is is maintaining his robotics units, because that's how you gain value as Protoss in this matchup. Like, long-term value. So, I... I have to say, like, um, as far as what Trigger is doing, this is the correct way to play when you're really far behind, is to just go Disruptors. Because Disruptors are the only thing that can, like, um... So, a supply efficiency is something that no one really talks about all that much, but supply efficiency is why, for instance, uh, Roaches don't scale well, right? Like, as you get later into the game, not only do they have shorter range, but for two supply, they just aren't good enough to have in your army in the late game as well. Right? And then you look at GG. Uh, you look at supply efficiency, and there are two units that stand head and shoulders above everything else in the game supply efficiency-wise. And that's the Baneling. At a half supply, the Baneling is probably the most supply efficient unit in the game. And then at three supply, the Disruptor is insanely supply efficient. The amount of shit that you can do with those two units for how much supply they cost is absurd. It's absurd. Um, 
But anyways, when you get way behind like that, obviously, you know, a disruptor in a dream, man. You just get a bunch of disruptors, hope you get those money shots, and who knows. In theory, swarm hosts are supply efficient, but they're too slow. No, they're not supply efficient. What they can... They're something that can grind insane value over time, right? They're one of the strongest theoretical, like, active units, I guess we could call it, right? A, an active unit, like something that you can run around the map and actually consistently do things with, like a Mutalisk, right? I guess a Medivac with Marines in it, like a, that could be considered an active unit, a Warp Prism, uh, Swarm Host. Anyways... Uh, let's get into Profane game number two. Three dollars. I was thinking of your parallels to hockey, and I think adopting more hockey tropes would help viewership. Like maybe after losing his natural, creator walks over and beats his opponent with a stick. <laughs> I definitely crowdfund some of his headsets for that. I, I I think that that would be amazing. That would certainly get more eyes on StarCraft too. We need to make like a WWE StarCraft league. Really. More, more people like shit talking each other and everything, right? Like, <laughs> make these crazy storylines. That would be fun. That could be big, I think, if any esport did that. Uh, <clears throat> when is last ASL group cast out? They're working on it right now. They're doing a great job too. Our editing team is on top of things. Uh, so we're on ancient sis turn. Bottom left we have cure. Top right we have trigger. I hope you can have a slightly better opener. Again, cure was very active with one medevac and one mine. The medevac had marines and then the one mine was just kind of running around and he got more damage than he should have and Trigger never really got into a good position. Cutting promos is the one thing that esports people suck huge at doing. Uh, cutting promos? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Like, uh, trying to hype for events or something? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's The thing is... You don't get too many players that actually have uh, big personalities going at it too much, I think, especially as esports get older. Uh, you get these these players that are have quietly grinded for years and don't, aren't necessarily as outspoken and stuff, right? It was exciting when Stefano and Idra were talking shit to people and, like, winning tournaments. But players like that don't stay on top as long. Um, yeah, anyways... I have a lot of thoughts on things like this. <laughs> I think about shit like this all the time since this has been my job literally forever. To become personality coaches. Yeah, it, well, I, and then people are like, oh, do pro gamers have personality? Well, yes, personality is something that every human has. Thank you, you fucking dumbass on Reddit. Uh, but w that's not what we're talking about, right? Like, we're, we're talking about is this person drawing fans just based off of the shit he says? <laughs> right? Yeah, Rainer has a lot of charisma. There's certainly players. Harstam as well. Harstam's great, right? Uh, but then sometimes you have... You have players... Like, lots of the world's top players just won't say as much. And sometimes they do, and people eat it up. Right? Maru says something cheeky. People love it. But how often does that occur? So... Yeah, no, MC was great. He was great. Yeah, the, we need the more players you have like that, the better, man. It just it it brings viewership and shit. So, anyways, uh, some nice micro there from Kier. Trigger just chasing out this reaper. Oh, that was that was a good try. That was a he almost blocked it actually. But uh, Twilight coming up, I think probably Trigger will once again go for the two gate blink Robo. Uh, he's good at that build. Generally does a good job with it. Uh, I hope that he can block whatever harassment is going to be sent over a little bit better this time. Reaper looks like it is uh, thinking about going back in. Blink in that second gate. We should see the Robo start shortly here for, for Trigger and then probably go into his third Nexus. As that is his main opener that we've seen. There's that Robo. Starport almost done, so Kira is going to be able to get some harassment going. There's his medevac. Oh, might end up getting... Not quite, not quite. Okay, SimCity, one little hole there, unfortunately. This is so annoying, man, I have to tell you. 
if this was me playing i'd be like wow you're so cool with that reaper man wow look how good you are oh my god look at your clicky clicky many clicks but um yeah i don't really play starcraft 2 anymore so we don't gotta worry about that <laughs> So I see someone in the chat asking, yeah, why Koreans prefer to be Brood War Pro versus StarCraft 2 when there's more prize pool in StarCraft 2 overall, weeklies, and overseas? Let me tell you something. If you play uh, StarCraft, the eSport StarCraft for money, you're probably the dumbest human being ever to have lived. This is probably the worst way to make money <laughs> is to play this game. <laughs> so probably it's a different reason. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, honestly on that. Okay, so gonna go ahead and he actually deals with this this mind drop quite well. Little uh, Hellion running in the side here. I tell you, there's one thing I've definitely noticed: Trigger not making many shield batteries. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, some gates being added on here. Uh, getting into that Colossus tech, getting a forge. Okay, I mean, things are going all right here, I think. Right? Triggers up five workers. He hasn't taken as much damage as we saw in the previous game. And, uh, well, where's that Raven going, man? It's just coming home. Okay, backs off. Yeah, he's not going to get anything done with that. That's... It's better to just leave those there for a moment as a pin or bring them home uh, more defensively. I, it's better in general to keep the stalkers across the map. Pick off units, you know, threaten the going in. Just kind of keep your opponent a little bit more defensive. Uh, third Nexus is up in mining. Colossi coming out. Charge on the way. Yeah, everything looking a lot better for trigger this game, I think. Third command center gets started. So, you know, this is always like the moment, right? You have stim... Combat shields plus one finishing. Uh, the third nexus, I mean, the uh, third command center gets started, and he will add two racks behind that, right? And you start to get ready for your move out as cure, right? You kind of want all those upgrades to finish together, and then you, you, you know, you're putting pressure on. You're not necessarily doing a full attack, but you're securing your third base. You're making Protoss really think about whether or not he's going to be taking some damage. Hmm. Observer just kind of checking out where the army's at. There is... Yeah, it's a little bit. That was a little bit of an overextension. <laughs> Raven there going to allow it to just get picked off immediately. So you see these upgrades are finishing, and as they finish, uh, here comes Gear right across the map. Combat Shields is coming in. There you go. So he's got, like, all these great upgrades now. Stim plus one. Combat Shields. Got a couple tanks in there. Got Medivacs. He has a... Uh, you know, uh, a raven in here. So, like, a disable attack could theoretically win this. There's two colossi. If you're fighting one colossi here... Or does he have enough for... Two... Oh, God, watch this. Yeah, see that disable man? Double disable? What are you even supposed to do there? Like, you... Your army... Like, your entire army is colossus-based here. So this is a... No, 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 no! Ah! Okay, he blinks onto the tanks. The colossi come back... You know what? He's taking a better engage than I thought he would, but Kira is really good. He had the Marauders on the south to tank the damage from the Colossi as opposed to the Marines. Colossi shred Marines, but don't do as well against Marauders. So if that had been switched up a little bit, if they were hitting Marines instead of Marauders during that, that would have gone very trigger favored very quickly once the Colossi were undisabled. Uh, but as is, I think that trigger actually dealt with that pretty well. It looked really scary when that happened. I actually thought he might die. Uh, now, making double robo... Yeah, I guess he lost his robos there. My god, that's rough. That is painful. Yeah, there's certainly, uh, there's certainly ways that you can deal with these raven timings. You know, I remember when stats started going for one high templar in a prism. That was funny. Seems a little bit too expensive, but yeah, blink and can zone them out. And phoenixes sometimes can snipe them. They definitely work hard on that. Uh, either way, here comes the attack again. This base has to be canceled. 
Uh, no way that that's going down. That was that was a moonshot base, I guess, right? Kind of surprising that he was really going for it. Did it like I guess if Cure sits back defensively for a moment, you can get it, but not too likely to see that. All right, mind drops going down. He has a cannon here, but that's obviously not going to be enough. Ooh. Okay, at least he sees this one. Really annoying to deal with this stuff, man. And I think we just saw Nexus die. <laughs> oh, dude. Ouch. All right, Trigger. Try oh, he pulls his odds back as the mines reload. So painful. So much damage on his army. Uh, Kira is just... He's grinding ahead right now. Just all of his moves are done a little bit better. Tough, tough stuff so far. All right. Trigger re-clears around the fourth base. Okay, so he's splitting Colossi. He doesn't have, like, a lot of shield batters or anything. A couple disruptors coming out. Careful with that disruptor. This disruptor is, like, incredibly important. Feels like you need to get a decent shot to really hold everything correctly. Ooh, another two disables go out, and it's very likely to lose this Nexus again. Okay, targets down the cannon. Here come some other units. Oh, maybe he can keep it. Maybe he can keep it. Little rotation of the army. Now, look, the Colossi are actually coming down here to fight now. That is really cool. Right, he has the overcharge as well. Now, the mine burrowing. Okay, he gets rid of the stalkers with that. But it's held. It's held. He's got all the bases, right? He's got the four bases now. Got to get that one mining. Mass uh, disruptor production. I mean, it's a better position than what we saw last game when he was going into heavy disruptor, right? He hasn't lost his entire army. He's still got some of the core base. Ooh, Colossi and disruptor production. He probably just wants to get to three. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's embarrassing. Uh, he probably wants to get uh, into three Colossi again. Three Colossi is a very, very good number. Now, okay, look at this. Cure hitting down here. I'm sure he'll hit the fourth base as soon as this army comes to clear that, right? Okay, he's going down to clear. Ooh, you got to be careful, man. Don't lose that Nexus. Now, Cure's army up at 12 o'clock is starting to move around a bit. I don't know what it's planning on, though. He's not really doing it. He's actually just focusing on this army. I'm actually a little bit surprised about that. Okay, now as his army's being chased. Oh, sick disruptor hit. Has this one Colossi there. It does get disabled. Overcharge. No, no, no. You got to pull back. You got to pull back here. Every unit counts so much. Okay, you know what? Like, there's, there's definitely right now the defensive trigger is really strong. Like, he's doing a good job of holding everything off because... Things are falling apart a little bit, but look at his supply now. 85 against 119. I mean, still, obviously, Cure's in the lead. He's got his four bases. He's not taking any harass or anything, but Trigger's getting himself an army together, right? Like, he's he's got some high-quality units here. He's hitting some disruptor shots. He's keeping the Nexuses alive. He's flanking with the disruptor. Oh, jeez. Well, that's painful. <laughs> and a drop into the main base. Uh-oh. Things are turning bad right now. Couple of EMPs on that Nexus for that additional damage. Yeah, targets down the Disruptor immediately as well. And it, we might be at the end at this point. Targeting down one of those Colossi. Trigger might just barely stay alive here, but losing the third Nexus. Yeah, it's... I mean, that's a sick Disruptor shot, but... And I guess he, he still has the Nexus, but yeah. GG. No big surprise. Uh, so 2-0 for Kier, uh here against Trigger. I think Trigger played pretty well. The second game was better than the first. Um, Got to work on blocking some of these harassments a little bit more cleanly. It's tough. It's very tough to do. Uh, playing such an honorable Protoss uh, style. But when Trigger really kind of fills out his style... If he starts adding in some cheeses, if he go watch goes and watch uh, Haas play a little bit and steals some of those builds, he'll become 
He might be the best American at that point. We'll see.